everybody and welcome to our Cambridge United Community Trust Assembly on Kindness. My name is Ash Dyer and I am the Primary Education Manager for the Trust. So usually when I deliver an assembly, I kind of start off by looking maybe on the front row or looking throughout and saying, put your hand up if you think you've got the biggest smile. And then like loads of children will go. Or maybe I'll say, put your hand up if you've got a birthday. And then everyone will like, ah. But I can't do that, I'm presenting to a camera, which is really different to what I'm used to. However, what it does mean I can do is, I can do a little bit of magic. I can have a little bit of a play around with the computer and I can do magic like this. Ready, ready, watch this, watch this. Watch this. <laughs> Okay, so, yeah, magic, but sometimes be a bit of a disaster. I'm like the world's worst Matilda. However, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump into a portal, a magic portal, which is going to transport me where I need to be to deliver our assembly on kindness. So, without further ado, let's go. Whoa! Whoa! Where am I? Where am I? Oh! Oh, we're only on top of the best stadium in all the land, the Abbey Stadium. Wow, that was a cool journey. Guys, I'm just having a look at some of the people that are joining us for this assembly today, and I must say, I'm taken aback. We've got people from the following places, and probably lots more. <gasps> We've got people from Cambridge, Haverhill, Ely, Huntingdon, Thurlow, Histon, Bluntisham, Abington, Bar Hill, Milton, Papworth, Bishop Stortford, Girton, Soham, Walmer Green, Rampton, Keddington, Littleport, Potton, Ratting, Hawkston, Stoke by Clare. From over 21 different schools, lots of families. We're so happy to have you. Thank you so much for tuning in with us today to what is our very first assembly, the our live assembly from the Cambridge United Community Trust, and it's on kindness. So what I wanted to do is to make sure that you get a really good understanding of what we're talking about in the assembly is pick out four key words that you may or may not know the meaning to, but I thought it'd be good to discuss them to help you as we go along. So the word inclusion means including others or being included within a group. The word well-being, a really important word that we'll be using a lot in this assembly, is about being comfortable, healthy or happy. Mental health is how we feel mentally and with our emotions. So we all have it just like we have physical health. And impact, another word we'll use a lot, is how our decisions, and in this case, our kind decisions, affect ourselves and others. So those are four really, really important words to remember. A little bit about the trust. So Cambridge United Community Trust, we have been a charity, or we are a charity, that uses the power of sport to help people improve their lives. And we've been going for 10 years now, hooray! Okay, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, calm down. <laughs> um, and we deliver different projects. So we deliver our education projects, which I'm in charge of, where we're going to schools and help out in those schools. We deliver projects for inclusion. So sessions that everybody can take part of. That includes people with disabilities, that could include older people with things such as our walking football. And um, we have our well-being projects where we go into secondary schools and we offer support to people with their well-being. And we have projects that happen within our community, like our free football sessions for Premier League kicks and our community lunches at the stadium. We even have a community boot camp, which people can watch or take part in and get really, really fit and big and strong. So that's a little bit about us. So what I want you to do now is have a little think. Stop what you're doing. You might want to kind of look around the room a little bit because these people might be included in here. Think about the last time somebody made you laugh. It might have been me, probably not though. But when was the last time somebody made you laugh? Think about the last time somebody gave you a compliment. Think about the last time somebody helped you to complete a task. Maybe you're doing some work at home. I'm sure you're all working really hard at home with your schoolwork. Really important. 
Uh, big shout out to Thurlow School, who have been doing a lot of the challenges that we've been setting. Um, but when was the last time somebody helped us complete a task? When was the last time somebody encouraged you? When was the last time somebody gave you something to make you happy? It could be a hug. It could be a smile. It could be a present. It could be something they've made. That person might be in the room with you now. Have a look at them. Give them a big smile. There's nobody in this room, but I'll just smile at no one. Give them a big smile. That's doing something kind. So the thing is, what does kindness mean to you? So here's the actual definition of kindness. So the quality of being generous, helpful, and caring about other people or an act showing this quality. So it really links in with three of our Premier League values, be inspiring, be connected, and be fair. And I think that if we show those values and we can really work towards doing some really good things within kindness. And I wanted to share some of the amazing work that's happening both nationally in our country, but also closer than you think. So you've all heard of Colonel now, Colonel Tom Moore and his laps around his garden. Um, but maybe you didn't know that we have people really local to us doing some amazing things. So the first person I'd like to talk about is Ted. So Ted is eight years old and he has completed a remarkable challenge for the Community Trust. So we're really, really grateful and proud that he's done that, where he's run five kilometres every day for five days. That's no mean feat for anybody, let alone somebody who's younger. And he's raised lots of money, which will really go a long way to helping people within our community. Let's check out his video when we caught up with him. Why did you take on the challenge? Um, to give the community something back because they're giving meals um, to people that, they, that need it. feel after you complete the challenge? I feel really happy because I raised a lot of money um, for a good charity and it was it was hard at the same time but I'm glad I did. What advice have you got for others who are thinking about doing something kind? Uh, do it because other people might need it as well so like if you do it it'll probably make them happy. Fantastic, Ted, and we are so grateful for your help. I now want to talk about two schools that have been working together, Thurlow and Hunden Primary Schools, which have put together a project of their own, have been inspired by Colonel Tom Moore to raise money and to help a real need that is, is really something that they feel passionately about in their school. But however, I will let Mrs. Feeks from Thurlow School do all the talking for me and tell you about their project. Hi, so on the 30th of April, um, children, families and school staff all took part in a challenge to either walk, run or scoop 100 kilometres in support of Captain Moore for the Young Mind Mental Health Charity. We did this really well. We did over 100 kilometres and have managed to raise so far over £800, which is fantastic. We chose to support Young Minds because they're a charity leading in supporting children's mental health. We all know that 
our bodies can become unwell, but so can our minds as well. So we feel it's really important to support a charity who supports young people, parents, carers, school staff and other professionals in helping children recognise the signs, whether they're feeling anxious, stressed, depressed, worried, whether it's because of what's going on at the moment or it's something that's a bit more long term. We understand that it's really important for children to feel supported during those times. As a federation of schools, we support the Children's Health Project, which helps us deliver lessons to children about their mental health. We also have an ELSA across our federation who works with children who may be worrying with stress or anxiety. We also have social pause days, which gives us a chance to reflect as a school and as a federation and focus on different aspects of mental health. We hope that the small amount of money that we've raised to help young minds will go a really long way. Wow, that's so amazing and well done everybody at Thurlow and Hunden Schools. You are truly inspirational for the work you're doing there. I want to talk about somebody now because we've talked about lots of children doing things, but not only children can do kind of things, of course. I want to talk to you about Tom Willard. So Tom Willard is a police officer and he's, if that wasn't inspirational enough, he has decided to raise money for Adam Brooks Charity. And he has run from Royston to Adambrooks Hospital, which is a long way. It's like a 20 minute drive. And he's worn his full riot gear, and, which is really, really heavy. But anyway, I will let Tom tell you more about what he's done and talk about the impact that he feels it's had. Hey right there! <laughs> I'm Tommy Willard, I'm a serving police officer with Hertfordshire Constabulary and I've just run from Royston Police Station to Adam Brooks Hospital. I've never been one to do anything by half so I decided to do it in um, full police right here. I took on this challenge ultimately to help. Uh, we're so lucky in this country to have the NHS and everything that's been going on these last few months has made it a really important time for us all to club together and do our little bit. Um, I get a real kick out of helping others and also pushing myself physically so it seemed like a perfect combination. Um, inspiring others to kind of do similar was also a really big part of doing what I did. This challenge has impacted me positively in so many ways and uh, knowing that I have helped others and made a little bit of a difference is probably the main one. Um, on a personal level I've sometimes struggled with self-esteem so having that sense of pride uh, and achievement uh, in doing something like this has been great for me. The advice that I'd give to those that want to do something kind for others be to definitely do it. Um, no matter how small that thing might be to you, it could be massive for somebody else. Um, something as simple as a smile could brighten someone's day. Um, a simple like asking someone how they are uh, could completely change, change their life for them. Um, having that sense then knowing that you've helped someone is like the best feeling ever. Wow, that's absolutely incredible. Really, really tough challenge, I bet. So we're really grateful for Tom for doing that and we're really proud of you. And finally, I want to talk about the young lady here, Imogen. So I was really lucky to have a real catch up with Imogen last week and I wanted to share um, what we spoke about. So if you didn't already know, Imogen has been completing one keepy up to represent every key worker in the country. 7.1 million, that's a lot of keepy ups. She's worked incredibly hard. She has been on BBC, ITV, in newspapers. She's met some really, really great people online and virtually that have supported her. So I wanted to share her story with you and the chat that we had. I saw a 
Captain Tom, on the news, walking around his garden, and he inspired me to do something to help as well. So I wanted to do something for all the NHS key workers and all of the key workers. And I thought if I went up and down my garden, like nobody would be interested because it's like tiny, like really tiny. <laughs> so and I told my mum and dad and they thought it was a really good idea. And then I said I wanted to do a key PR for every single key worker in the country. And they laughed because they knew there was an awful lot. Really and then sorry. when I searched it up, it was like 7.1 million. So originally my target was 200 key PRPs a day. And we worked out it was going to take me 97 years to complete my channel. <laughs> but Amazing. now I'm doing at least 5,000 a day, which is a lot better. Wow. Like, <laughs> Well, I certainly have gotten a lot better at doing keepy uppies. At the start of this challenge, I couldn't beat my record of 40 keepy uppies. But now, three weeks later, my record is 174. This goes to show that the more practice, the more you, you get better. And I'm also really proud to be getting people active during lockdown. And it's really easy to sit indoors, watch your favourite channels, go back to bed. And well, it's wonderful to get people out in their gardens. And giving them a challenge to actually do and honestly i need the help <laughs> i just want to um talk about this idea of the impact and the fact that you're inspiring people um what you're doing is really powerful and having a powerful impact and you said about people helping you so what i wanted to do is just show you something really really quickly um just to demonstrate a little bit of the impact that you've been having on some of our coaches and also some of our disability participants that are really keen to show you some of the things that they've been doing be ambitious. Wow, it's really amazing that everyone's doing this to a girl that they don't even know and I've never gotten this far without them. All around the country and the world, people are spending their time doing keepy uppies and sending their videos and they're spending their money donating to my nine charities, which I find is really, really, really wonderful. Well, the support from everyone has been amazing. People have been so kind and saying such wonderful things. And they're really helping me raise lots of money and sending me loads and loads of keepy uppies. And it's quite mind-blowing, literally. And Cambridge United have been absolutely amazing. And when I first started this 7 million keepy uppy challenge three weeks ago, I had a surprise call from Mark Bonner on the radio, Cambridge, and he sent me the most and he sent me loads of keepy uppies from Harry Darling, Tom Knowles, Ben Workman, Leon Davies, which was totally amazing. And Sam Squires and Josh Coulson have sent me keepy uppies too. And it's been fantastic, like absolutely fantastic. And I've had girls and boys of all ages going out into their gardens and doing keepy uppies. I've even had some children as young as two years old going out into their gardens. And I've had loads of clubs like grass, grassroots clubs, professional clubs across the country helping and I've had walking football clubs, soccer, 
Sockability has her men's, women's, academy clubs and army clubs have sent me the most fantastic videos. I've had people from all over the UK, Cornwall, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland. And people have sent me keepy uppies from around the world. I've had Paris, um, Florida, Canada, New York, New Zealand, Australia, South Africa, and it was totally unbelievable. And I've had some keepy uppies from Jamie Thickston on Jamie Thickston on Heart Radio. And um, I had Lucy Bronze, she's my absolute idol, and it was absolutely amazing. I nearly fell off my seat. <laughs> Well, I'd say just go for it. If you're wanting to raise money for charity, like be ambitious and just don't be scared. And you're, what you're doing is a good cause, so don't worry how crazy or silly it is. If it's like crazy, like 7.1 million people, you would definitely need some help. <laughs> you have to make friends with people and tell them about what you're doing and how to get people involved. I use Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, which has really helped spread the word across the country and the world and Cambridge United have been brilliant and their players and staff have been incredibly supportive and have been getting involved so I'd like to say a massive thank you to them but you don't actually have to raise money to actually be kind sometimes it's just the small things like the everyday things and like helping out your brother who can't play Roblox very well maybe tying your room once in a while without mum or dad asking and the best thing about being kind is that people tend to be kind back to you then when I get messages on Instagram or Twitter sending me nice messages or saying nice things, I always like thank them back. And I've found that they want to do more and get involved as well. But you, if you're kind, it makes you feel good and it helps your mind and makes you feel happy. And that's like a really, really good thing. Fantastic. And what I'm going to do, Imogen, is once we've finished, I'm going to show the link to your page to your Twitter so that immediately after watching this, people can get involved. They can watch this assembly and go, right, I'm going straight out in the garden. <laughs> I'm going to do my keep ups. I'm going to send it to them straight away. I think it's so important. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Amazing. Right. Imogen. I'm going to count mine up, I'll leave you to get on with yours, thank you so much for talking to me, it's been absolutely brilliant, you're a true inspiration, we're all very proud thank of you. you and we'll see you very soon. Thank you. Wow, what an inspiring and amazing group of people and so many of them just on our doorstep doing kind things, I hope that you felt as inspired as I certainly have. And I think it's really important to address the link that many people have talked about in terms of the link of kindness and mental health and well-being. In fact, I'm looking at a direct quote from Imogen. I really love this quote. The best thing about being kind is that people tend to be kind back to you. If you're kind, it makes you feel good and it helps your mind and it makes you feel happy. And I mean, I can't put it better than that. It's it's. It's so important. And I think with our uh, well-being, it's important to note that our well-being can change. It can change from moment to moment, from minute to minute, or day to day. And at the moment, our daily routines have been significantly changed because we've been asked to stay indoors. And that can be really, really tough. We can be more bored, we can feel lower than normal, or we can feel lonely. And that can affect our well-being. There are things we can do to make ourselves feel happier. And being kind is really at the heart of this. And I hope that seeing some examples has helped you to understand that. Um, so by doing kind things for others, it helps you to feel good about yourself. So what better reason to go out and do something kind? And in terms of well-being, and through this very difficult period, what I thought we'd do is share five tips to better well-being at home from our friends at the BBC and an organisation called Own It with the tips. Let's take a look. Connect. Making sure that you socialise with the people that you live with. Share meals together. Play games together. Talk. Listen. Share your stories. 
making sure that you keep contact with those that you care about, maybe a phone call to grandparents or friends, talk to people online, but make sure that you're not spending too much time in front of the TV or on your computer games because you'll miss out on those connections. Be active. So we've seen so many fantastic examples here, but it could be for you. Try running, learning something, learn how to skip, keep your fitness up, go for a cycle, go for a walk. Take part in Joe Wicks's exercise. Take part in Simon Wall's family fitness fun exercises at 11 o'clock every morning. There are plenty of things out there to help you stay active. Be creative and play. Grab hold of some materials in your house. What can you make? Maybe you'll make some music, make some really cool videos, make a collage with art. Maybe you wanna start your own singing career from home. Use your imagination, make stories, invent characters. They can help with well-being. Learn, learn, learn. There are so many things that you can learn throughout this period. Maybe you wanna take your hand at photography. Maybe you wanna go in the kitchen and learn how to cook, although that might be a dangerous prospect for some parents. But gain knowledge, learn a new language, learn a musical instrument, challenge yourself. It can really, really help your well-being to have that pride that you've learned something new. And make sure you pick up lots of books. There are so many great things to read out there. Take notice. Pay attention to the world around you. When you're going on your daily walk, what wildlife can you find? What can you see, hear, smell? Use all of those senses. Live in the moment. Explore your gardens. Have a think about what you can really, really get stuck into, both in and outside of the house, that really increases your understanding of the wider world. So guys, I hope you find them helpful. And if you do one, two, three, four, all five of them, I really hope that they can help you with your well-being at home. There may be many that you do already, but hopefully something new there. What I wanted to show you now is a conversation that was hosted by our mental health officer, Daz Coakley, and he was fortunate enough to have a sit-down conversation through Zoom with Mark Bonner, the first team manager, Kaylee Ann Burt, the captain of Cambridge United's women's team, and defender Leon Davies, who is an academy product and a key first team player. So really important people, crucial to our club. And Daz caught up with them to talk about kindness and well-being and mental health. Check it out. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Q&A. Um, I'm Daryl Coakley, Mental Health Officer at Cambridge United Community Trust, and I'm joined by some very special guests. So as you can see, we've got Mark Bonner, Cambridge United Head Coach, first team player Leon Davis, and women's team captain Kaylee Ann Burt. Thank you all for, for joining us. How are we all? Yeah, I did all right. Good. Very well, thanks, guys. <laughs> Excellent. So let's uh, let's dive dive straight in. So the theme for this year's Mental Health Awareness Week is kindness. Um, we've seen some phenomenal acts of kindness and generosity in recent weeks, which we'll hear about in a in a short while. But to start and to I think frame our discussion, we've had a fantastic question. That's been sent in by 11 year old Cooper from All Saints Primary in Bishop Stortford. And he would like to ask, what does kindness mean to you? Um, probably for me, it's um, doing something for someone else when there's absolutely nothing in return for you, just for the good of doing it for somebody. To make someone feel better, to give something to somebody, to give your time to someone. I think for me, that's what it is. I think kindness is being friendly and considerate. And I think that um, when I say consider, I think it's best to um, understand how people are feeling and then let that frame how um, you're going to treat them. So you treat them how you would like to be treated. So if somebody you can, if somebody's feeling a little bit down, you think to yourself, OK, how would I like to be treated if I'm if I'm feeling a little bit down? Use that consideration to then give some kindness and hopefully it'll feel a bit better. That's how I see it anyway. I'd say Tom Moore's laps around his garden. That was one thing that was just just unbelievable. So um, one one for a, a man of his age to be doing that, and the fact that he only wanted to raise about a grand and ended up raising like four million pounds is just just unbelievable. Really, it's something you you can aspire to at any age. It's something I'd certainly like to be doing at ninety nine years old, but I've got a long way to go. <laughs> that was something that really really just stood out for me. 
I think from my point of view, sort of a more of a local rather than sort of a national scale. Um, just loads of people uh, looking out for each other and helping the vulnerable people when they've been in lockdown. There are uh, households near where I live that have little um, cards in their windows to say that they're a vulnerable person and um, if you could help, please could you help? And um, people have been doing that and I, I think that's really, really great. I think that has been staggering, hasn't it? The amount of um, sort of kindness and generosity that people have been showing within their within their own communities. Mm, yeah. Um, and hopefully something that, that will continue after after this as well. There's two really good points there, isn't there? There's the example of someone who's raising money for people um, and and awareness in the case of the the Tom Moore walk, or you can you can come up with so many people that are doing things. Imogen's seven point one million tap ups that loads of people have got behind. Those sorts of things is one thing. And then as Kaylee points out, the point of just doing things for other people and helping vulnerable people or just helping out people in general. I think one of the biggest signs of almost people coming together is this uh, draw a rainbow in your window. You can't walk very mm. far without seeing a rainbow in, in a house window somewhere and people coming out on Thursday nights and, and clapping for the NHS and clapping for carers. All those things um, are doing things for somebody else. But when a group of people get behind something, that's quite powerful as well. And um, as you say, Daz, I think if, if it can be long lasting and we realise actually the really important things are that we look after each other and support each other and, and are kind to people, as Cooper kind of asked in the first question, I think those things are, are massively important. And if any good can come out of this situation, maybe that's that's one of those things. How important do we think sort of kindness is in, in sport in general? Yeah, I think I think kindness in sport is massive. I mean, especially playing with with teammates you have to learn to be kind to them you've got to because you're going to get new new players a lot throughout your, throughout your career as a player's perspective but you need to make sure that you're kind to everyone and respect everyone in different ways and also the opposition as well um and without kindness in a team it's not e always easy to succeed as well as well as you'd like to i think it's important it's important in everything we, we work in a team sport where you rely on other people so much um and so you can help other people get the best out of themselves, which in turn helps the team. But you also know that that will pay its way back to you when you need that help as well. So we might not always label it as kindness. We might not always see it as, oh, someone's being kind. But ultimately, it's doing things for other people, looking out for people, being there to speak to people. And, and, and the fans, if you're spectating a football game, you know, the positive, your positive chance that you can give to your players the kindness of that you don't you don't have to say go on keep going you're doing really well you don't have to say that to the players but being kind and being supportive it you know you you say that and it can really really affect players in a positive way and that breeds confidence in them as well we're a community club we have to come alive now and, and really be there for people you know we ask so many people to support us throughout the year well support works both ways and we got to make sure we're there for people as well so if we're if we're creating some kindness and doing for other people, then that's a, a nice value uh, to have as a club. And it's important for us that I always think you've got to try and pay things forward. So if someone does something for you, pay it forward and pass it on to somebody else. And if you can get that spread in as, a, as just a natural thing that you do, you can create a, good, a lot of good and a lot of happiness from, from your situation. So in a bad time at the moment, we've got to do as much as we can to support people. So I'm really happy to play a part in that. I think as you said there, I think kindness can be can be really contagious I think passing on one smile can pass on to someone else and before you know it you've impacted quite a number of people yeah I agree with that 100% I think um, it's, it's sometimes we under underestimate how much speaking with someone can make such a huge difference or just being with someone and you see that right now when those things are taken away from us at the moment when we don't see our friends or we see our family as much as we would when we're not in physical contact with those people you know, even speaking on a screen is, is, is really important and something that makes a difference over even just a phone call. But uh, seeing other people and being with other people is important. And, and at the minute, it's not normal. It's not, you know, as it would be. Um, this, for example, an assembly, we should be in your school hall doing this, but mm -hmm. we're not. And we have to make the best of the situation. But staying in contact with people is so important. Looking people in the eye, seeing people smile, like you say, Daz, it can have a massive impact on your own well-being. So I think that that's an important thing to understand. Uh, we mustn't shut ourselves off in a time when we are quite isolated. Rounded up beautifully there. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I think uh, before we move on, 
to some questions that have been uh, been sent in. I just wanted to ask each of you for one kindness tip that you would give to to any young person that might be watching watching the assembly this morning. I think um, for young people, you've got to remember that kindness doesn't cost anything. Um, yeah, people may think that being nice to someone will be buying them loads of stuff or all of that, but really just words words and affection really i think the, the kindness that you can give off to someone else can almost can make their day just by that one comment you might make to them yeah and i i would give the tip or the challenge to do one act of kindness at least every day so as leon's already said it's completely free um and it can i think of it as like a little superpower because it has the power to affect anybody's day for the better so that is completely in your control for the day so it might be tidying up your room for your mum and dad without them having to ask you to or help out around the house that sort of thing so my little challenge slash tip is to do at least one act of kindness every day and I bet you with that act of kindness you will smile and you'll make somebody else smile and your day will improve because that's what Agnes does uh, kindness does it is contagious and yeah I think it, it is a little superpower because it is just amazing kindness is great and it can really really positively affect somebody more than more than you can understand um yeah so that's my little challenge slash tip gonna move on now to some of the, the questions that have been that have been sent in so we'll start with um James and Charlotte. James is 10, Charlotte is 5. They both um, go to Gert and Glebe. They would like to ask Kaylee and Leon, uh, how do you stay happy and healthy through this difficult period? I'll start with that. Um, I think staying happy is one of the most important things during this time. And the, the way I like to stay, stay happy during all of this is doing and surrounding myself with the things that i love to do and the people that i love as well in a safe way like like everyone knows um i like to stay healthy obviously by exercising as much as possible but in um the way to stay happy and healthy for me um i've made sure that i get lots of sleep I get lots of water, so I'm drinking a lot and so staying healthy and hydrated, um, and I'm staying active, um, making sure that I go for my one walk a day, and then obviously it's unlimited now, so I can go out for runs and walks and things, which is good. Um, and then I also don't live with my family, so um, speaking to them makes me very happy. And when obviously, well, when we're not in a in a lockdown, I do see them quite a lot. So not being able to see them quite a lot has at times made me sad, but then um, I like joined up with them on a, on a Zoom video call or FaceTime them or spoken to them on the phone. Um, and that's really, really helped. Leon, we've got a question for you now from uh, James and Luke. James is, is 10 and goes to the Galford. Luke is 13 and goes to um, St. Pete. He'd like to ask how fans and opposition players being unkind during matches? Oh, simple as I just ignore them, always. If it's hurtful, then it's something that, I mean, everyone, at the end of the day, everyone's got their opinion on you as a footballer, and you can therefore choose who you want to listen to. If it's something that I don't agree with, whether it's um, someone's opinion on the way I play or, something as silly as that it's something that I just choose to to just put to one side because if you start letting people's opinions like their negative opinions get to you it'll only make you worse as a footballer and as a person as well so Mark we've got a question in from uh, Chloe and Jack Chloe who's 11 Jack who's 6 both from from Histon and um, their question is if you lose a match or a player misses a, a really easy chance how do you not let that get to you Oh, Chloe, Jack, that's a good question, that. Um, well, there's a few things on that. Number one, I would say um, sometimes it does get to you, and that's okay, because it's really normal to get frustrated or angry or upset, because they're just normal emotions, just like being happy. It's, it's unrealistic to probably be happy all the time. We all have moments in days where we don't feel great or things don't go our way. Um, 
And there's a massive amount of learning that can be done when you make mistakes or things don't come off for you. So you have to try and see that as a moment where you can learn from. And, and I'd say the way that you do that is, I don't know, if we lose a game, that happens on one day. So it's a one day story. I mustn't turn that into a two day story or a three day story by letting that be in my head for the next week. I have to try and deal with that as early as possible. But the other thing is going back to what we spoke about earlier and kindness. Other people can help me in that situation as well. And we can help each other in those situations by talking through them and, and by dealing with them. So I think it's, we're going to go through a season, we're going to win, lose and draw games. We're going to go through a school day. You're going to have good moments and bad moments. You're going to be on the computer. You're going to have moments where you're loving what you're doing and moments where you, where you fail. And that's just life. So that's okay. It's how we deal with that is important. But it is okay to be frustrated and angry because that's quite a natural reaction. What's important is that we learn how to cope with that and we learn how to help each other people help help each other out when we feel like that, I think. As we've all mentioned, I think we all believe in the, the potential of, of kindness to make a positive impact within the schools that we go to and the communities that we're in and and even the whole world. So can we can we all share our acts of kindness and by using the hashtag kind use and, and also can we give Kaylee's challenge a go. So can we use our, mm. our kindness superpowers and do one random act of kindness each day for somebody else? Uh, thank you, everyone, um, for, for everything that you've, you've said. I uh, really enjoyed that. So thank you very much. I hope you find those helpful. And now we're on to the final part of our assembly, which is the over to you section. Now, anybody that's been watching my um, English or maths videos on YouTube, um, we'll see that I always end with an over to you, something for you to think about. And based on this assembly, I've identified three things that you can get stuck into straight away after we've finished. So I hope that you decide to have a look at them and maybe have a go at one, two, or even all three of them. But really importantly, we hope that you can share your kindness with us and continue to do so like others have by using the hashtag kind use. That's K-I-N-D-U-S. Kind use on Facebook, Twitter, on Instagram. We love to see it. We'd love to talk to you. We'd love to do another one of these assemblies or a follow-up video in a few weeks to show all of the other kind things that have been happening. But have another look at the Over To You challenges now for more details. So your first Over To You challenge is to help Imogen reach 7.1 million keepy ups. Film yourself, send them to her on Twitter, donate to her cause if you can. Let's all pull together and help her reach her total because it really is a fantastic challenge for a great cause. Your second over to you challenge is to try the five tips to better home well-being. Let us know if there's anything we can do to help you with that, but have a go throughout those five tips and see where you can really make a difference to yourself to help your well-being. And your final over to you challenge is to share your acts of kindness. Have a think about what you'd like to do, whether it's big or small. It could be something as simple as helping out around the house, or maybe you wanna create your own challenge. Let us know, tag us on at CUC Trust. Use the hashtag kind use. We want to celebrate and really push for more people to do kind things at home. And hopefully we can make a video soon where we can celebrate those. So that's it. I hope that you found it helpful today. I hope you feel inspired. I'm really grateful that you've watched us today. If you have friends, if you have family members that you'd like to show this to, please feel free to share it. Share it now. Good. Do it now. Do it now. Hit share as soon as you finish and say, oh, you should really watch this because there are some really nice messages. Even if it's just to share the great work that's been happening in our local community, have a share. Watch it back if you want to. Um, it'll be on YouTube. It'll be available. And like I said, use the hashtag kind use to share with us what you've been doing. Guys, it's been a pleasure. Hope to see you soon. Take care and be kind. We would love to hear that you joined us today for our assembly. Whether you watched it live or you've watched it at a later time, please click the link in the description below to let us know by filling in the really quick Google form. Also, if you want to look at some of our other resources, such as our activity packs or our projects for maths, English or science, check out the website that's shown here. Finally, 
I'd love for you to drop me an email if you have any questions or you want to send us anything through for us to share. My email's just there. Thanks very much, guys. All the best. See you soon.